back to DIY with Danica. For today's tutorial, I'll be sharing with you how you can make one of my very favorite Halloween costumes. This one goes out to all the teachers and educators and anyone in your life who is just always correcting someone's diction or word choice. Today's tutorial is going to be on how you can make your very own diction fairy Halloween costume. I've had this costume for a very long time and it's starting to get old and I decided that making a video for you all would be the perfect opportunity for me to update and upgrade my diction fairy Halloween costume. As a teacher, I find this to be the perfect costume. The kids love it. Your colleagues love it. It's just fabulous. It's, um, especially if you make a living teaching people um, about diction in particular. So for today's tutorial, you will need the following materials. You will need scissors, your glue gun, some glue sticks. You will need a stapler and some staples, of course. You will need a piece of fabric that is pretty sturdy. I have a navy blue one. And long enough to go around your midsection. That's to make the skirt portion of the costume and that is the most time consuming part of the costume. This piece of fabric that I have is made out of a sturdy, I would say a sturdy cotton. Um, I have cut it so that it is nine inches wide and five feet long because I wanna make sure that it can wrap around my waist and have a little bit extra in terms of wrapping around my waist. Now, you will also be needing, and here is the like controversial or challenging part for me, you will need a dictionary. Now, when I first made this costume, the teacher in me, the reader in me, could not bring myself to destroy a dictionary. So, when I made the skirt the first time, and here, here it is, Okay, when I made the skirt the first time, because I just could not bring myself to tear pages out of a dictionary, I cheated and I used the phone book. So I have no idea or why they still give you phone books, but I use mine for utilitarian purposes. Like I tear out the pages and use them with Windex to clean my mirrors or to clean the glass in my cars. Um, in my car, I don't have more than one car, but um, I also used it to make that skirt that I just showed you. However, many years have passed and as technology has advanced, it occurred to me when I was about to make this costume and this video that I can't remember the last time I actually went to go and get my dictionary. Now this one is super old. I've had it since I was in college and I'm not going to tell you how long ago that was, but suffice to say it was a very long time ago and the cover is like all gone and torn. So with the advent of Google, which was not around when I was in college and all of the internet resources we have to look up words, I feel less um, torn about tearing up this dictionary. So this time I'm actually going to have real dictionary pages. No one knew that this skirt was not made out of dictionary pages, but I knew in my heart. So this time I am going to actually make my diction fairy costume with real pages from the dictionary, which is cool because I'm gonna have those little red dots on the skirt too. Okay, so let's see, let's run down. I said we needed our scissors, we need our glue sticks, we need our glue gun, we need our stapler, we need our fabric, we need our dictionary. Um, that is just for the skirt. Go to your local craft store. I went to Michael's and I picked up these iron on sparkly letters 
and you can pull out the letters that you need to spell out Diction Fairy and then iron them onto the shirt. The materials that you will need for your wings are a diction the dictionary still because um, I use the cover for the wings. So this is what the wings look like. I use the cover. Like I said at the time, I could not bring myself to destroy a um, dictionary. So what I did was I photocopied some of the dictionary pages and I glued them onto some cardstock. So you will be using cardstock for your wings. You will use dictionary pages for your wings. And I added a little bit of bling, a little sparkly on the tips of the wings as well. I used ribbon to attach it so that they hold on to my shoulders like a backpack. And then I used um, a wooden dowel with ribbon for my Diction Fairy wand and a little bit of tinsel in there as well with some, which should have been dictionary pages, but instead I use phone book pages. No one knew the difference. And on my, um, on my ribbon, I have some beads to spell out the words Diction Fairy. Now that we know everything that we'll need, let's get started on making the Diction Fairy skirt. The first step in making the Diction Fairy skirt is to, as I stated, measure out a piece of fabric that is approximately nine inches wide by, for me, I did five feet, um, just to make sure that it ran, uh, went around my waist and had excess. I have about a foot extra. Um, once I wrap that around my waist, don't start measuring how wide my waist is, people. So anyway, um, after I cut that to the correct size, I made sure that I ironed it so it's nice and ironed. And I folded over just about maybe a quarter of an inch. I folded over and ironed that down too. And that is going to help me avoid having strings hanging on this skirt. Now, if you are only going to use this one time and you're gonna check it after that, then you might not go through the process of folding it over, ironing. Um, but I like to wear mine often. I can't say often, but I like to wear mine whenever I move to a new school at least once. So I plan to hold on to it for a while. So. Get your fabric, iron it, cut it to the right size, fold over the edge and iron it. Now that I've done all those things, I am going to take my glue gun and I am going to glue down that edge that I folded just as an extra precaution to make sure that no strings are hanging. Now you could sew this if you had that kind of time, but I don't, so I won't. The next step is going to be to get all of your pages together. And before you take any pages out of any books, if you are a child or you did not buy that book, make sure you ask a parent or the person who bought the book, okay? We always wanna make sure we have permission to do things so that nobody gets in trouble. That's a warning for the kids out there. So this one, is this is where it becomes a little time consuming because you have to take the pages out of the book, of course, and you have to 
fold them like a fan. So just like how kids used to make fans in school um, with pieces of paper, you will be folding them like that and then stapling them. I would not encourage you to sit in your crafting room and do all that. I prefer to do something like that while I am sitting in front of TV, watching TV, just to have my hands doing something and then come back and um, use that or whatever it is I'm working on for my project. So I'm just going to show you guys a couple how I do it and then I will fast forward to when I have them all done. So I'm adding one more material to your list, either an X-Acto knife or a razor blade, and that helped me get the pages out a lot cleaner and faster. So when I was trying to pull, I might have got like one or two pages, and the ends were all jagged. With the razor, I got a lot more pages, and they have a clean edge. I'm gonna grab a couple of pages, maybe two, and fold them like a fan. And then I'm going to staple them at the top. Let's do another one. Just a few pages. And stagger them a bit. Okay, so I've done three little sections. So you can get an idea of what they look like. Now, I will need a whole bunch of these because, as I stated, I need to make a fan, a skirt. That's a lot, so I'm going to spare you guys that. I'm going to take a quick break fold up all my pieces, and then when I return, I will show you how I insert them into the fabric to make the skirt. Okay, good people, I am back, and I have lots and lots and lots and lots of folded papers. I really wish I had done that last night, but what you gonna do? Okay, so I have my folded papers. The next step is going to be to glue them in rows into that fabric. So here's my fabric. I'm going to glue it onto the side where the fold is folding in. And I'm going to go in straight rows. So straight down. And then I will stagger them so that I get that layered um, ruffled look on the skirt. So let me move some of these papers out of the way and we can get started. I'm going to fold my fabric in half and I'm going to make sure I start from the center going out because as I stated, I want to leave the edges for that excessive um, overlap so that it'll kind of wrap around me and I can either put a safety pin there, which is what I've been doing for the last few years, or if I want to be fancy, I could put some Velcro or even a button. I'm not button fancy today. At the most, we might get some Velcro, but I'm thinking I might just do a safety pin. Here we go. Okay, so this is the center. Right around there. And I'm going to start at the bottom. 
and I'm going to start with ones that are plain. So here's a plain one. I'm gonna take my glue, put a little glue, and I'm gonna put it on the side where the prongs are not sticking up because I don't want it to poke me. So layering it, piece of glue right at the center. space in between because they're going to be layered. So now I want to take a minute and just check and see if I have full coverage going around my waist. So I'm gonna stand up and give it a try. And see, do I have that coverage? And no, I need like maybe a bit more. Okay, that is important to do so that you don't waste paper and time by doing too much or do too little and then in the end it won't wrap all the way around. So I have my finger right where I wanted it to go. So I'm going to put that one in first. and I will fill in towards the middle. Now I'm about to start my second row of dictionary pages. I'm going to stagger them to be about an inch, maybe an inch and a half higher. I'm just eyeballing that. And I'm going to create a window kind of effect. So every place I left a gap on that first row is where I'm going to put the next row of um, pages. So here's a gap. I'm going to put the pages right there. Gap, pages.
Now it's time for the third row and that is gonna be the last row. And now I'm going to kind of start sprinkling the ones that have the little letter things on there for some color on that top row. Make sure that you're being intentional when you're gluing these in. So when I was gluing them in, I wanted to glue them so that letters and um, big things like the big giant O at the beginning of the O section would be showing up. And I'm also gluing them with intention in terms of I would like for the little prongs of the staple to be facing up and away from my skin so that just in case any of them um, are not completely bent in that they don't actually poke me. So the flat side here is the part that I'm gluing down onto the fabric that will actually be touching my body. So here we go with row three. Now that I finished row three, the next step is going to be to fold the excess of fabric that's at the top over to enclose all of the rows. So you can see I have all this fabric up here and I wanna cover this. So I'm gonna fold it over, quite a bit actually. I decided that I wanna fold it twice so that I get a thinner band around the top of my skirt. First fold. Put a little glue. So the skirt is pretty much finished. Um, I will stand and give you the view. Okay, And I have a little extra right here that I can pin to the side.
And now I'll just tuck it, but as you can see, hands free. That takes care of the skirt. It is pretty much a dictionary page tutu. Call it my dictionary page tutu. I always wear it with red jeans myself, um, but you could wear it with stretch pants, tights, something to make it appropriate, especially if you're going to wear it out of school. I'm pretty happy with my skirt. I am not gonna be fancy. I am not going to put any um velcro or any buttons or zippers or anything like that on it because i just don't have the time and i wear it once for a few hours and this is good enough for me so i'll be safety pinning this on when the day comes the next component of our diction fairy costume is the shirt so for my diction fairy costume i wear this shirt that says diction fairy now, I'm not going to demonstrate this because it is quite easy to make. Demonstrating that because it is quite easy to make. Go to your local craft store. I went to Michael's and I picked up these iron on sparkly letters. And you can pull out the letters that you need to spell out Diction Fairy and then iron them onto the shirt. I also added just a little bling. I added a sparkly little... Um, Used to be a hairpin, but it broke, so I hot glued it onto the shirt. And now it says Diction Fairy. So there's your skirt, there's your shirt. Next thing you will need are your wings because you are a fairy. For the wings, I'm also going to give you a brief overview of how I made them. I'm not gonna make another pair because this one will suit me fine. At the time that I made this costume the first time, I was very opposed to tearing up a dictionary. So, but I did need my wings to be have dictionary pages. So what I did was I photocopied some dictionary pages. I took those photocopies and I attached them to pieces of cardstock, which I cut into petal shapes. So you can see I have petal shaped cardstock here. And I put, and this is part of the phone book too, because I ran out of photocopies of the dictionary. But um, I put, I glued that photocopy or those pages onto the front to the front of the cardstock and the back because people can see your wings from both directions. I then glued those onto a cover of a real dictionary. See, I didn't have any problem with taking the cover off of the dictionary, but I did have a problem with pulling the pages at the time. Go figure. Anyway, um, so I have a cover of a dictionary and it's red because my whole accessory vibe is red. Like I said, I wear red pants under this. I have this, I have my sparkly reddish pink um, words that say diction fairy. Between the cardboard of the book, I put the, and the wings, I put pieces of ribbon, which I measured just to make sure that they will go completely over my arms loosely and comfortably. I glued that on and then I put a piece of cardboard over that and then I put the wings. So I will show you what that looks like on. So this is what the wings look like. When they're on, I wear them like a backpack. This is the string or the ribbon that I use and it's quite comfortable. I like it. So now I have my wings and my skirt in the background. Um, the last few accessories that you need to be the perfect diction fairy will be your wand, your magic wand. I made this magic wand by taking wooden dowels that I got at a craft store. You could probably find a nice thick one, but I had skinny ones like this. So there's about three of them taped together in here. Because at the time I did not want to destroy a dictionary, I used the phone book pages to wrap those three um, pieces of wooden dowel together. Then I took a red ribbon and wrapped that like a candy cane. I took pages from the phone book again and I cut them like flower petals and glued them together with some 
tinsel that has little stars on it. And then I took the little bits of hanging red ribbon and some beads that spell out words. And I have diction and I have fairy right there. I don't think I'm gonna make this one over either. I will use this one on Halloween at my job. And the very last piece, because the details are so important, just FYI, when I wear this, as I stated, I wear it with some red um, skinny jean type pants underneath. And I wear them with sparkly fuchsia tennis shoes. And on my socks, these are my socks. On my socks, I do attach the sparkly, pink tinsel with the stars also for that completed look. And there you have it. Next thing you see here is going to be a picture of me wearing the Diction Fairy costume um, maybe a year or two ago. Isn't it so cute? So that's it guys. That is how you transform yourself into a Diction Fairy. I hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Please share this tutorial with your friends and family, those crafty people, those people in your lives who are always correcting someone and you think that they should be a diction fairy for Halloween. If you haven't subscribed yet, it's time. It's almost been a year. It's almost been a year. I'm so excited. My anniversary, my YouTube anniversary is coming up and um, I will have had this channel for one year. If you haven't subscribed in that year, then now is the time. Please subscribe, please subscribe. And thank you guys for watching. Remember, if I can do this, you can do this.